Well, so far, we've looked at IT service management in terms of <coughs> what is it we're trying to do. We've looked at the Zapman Enterprise architecture, we've looked, which tells you how to think about your service from a designer, owner sort of level, at the top two levels, the owner, planner level, sorry, and how in IT product development with Dennis, you're looking at the designer sort of ideas. We've looked at how you can measure the likelihood of people using your type of uh, service with the UTAUT and T uh, TAM. We thought a bit about business need and how you can identify that and how you can identify the sort of value that the service will deliver to some of your stakeholders. We've looked at who the different stakeholders are and how you can identify them. <clears throat> because all of these are important in working out for your individual article which set of inter uh, IoT type of data are you going to use and to whom or what sort of service you can de develop from that and then who is going to benefit uh, from those services. Because that gives you a focus as you kind of design what you're going to do. So today I want to move on to the next stage. You've got all these great ideas about a service. Now how are you going to deliver it? What sort of mechanisms are you going to use for delivering this service? So that's what I want to look at. Won't worry about this seminar just yet. We'll think about that if we've got time. But I want to think, concentrate for the first part of today on the way we deliver those services. And typically we can think of three different aspects. We can think about the hardware, the technology, in terms of the device. Are we going to deliver it onto a smart device? Are we going to deliver it to one of these beasties? On a PC? What sort of technology, our servers do we need? What's the communications network that we're going to be using? We need to think about the software. What sort of software is it going to be? How can we find all the links? How can we find all the ways of connecting the stuff together? And then once we've created that application, that service overall, how do we manage it? And how do we support it in the future? What sort of support do we need? How often do we need to modify it, update it, keep it up to date, keep it going? So three fundamental sets of questions that you need to consider as you write your article. And I'm going to use the six questions that go across the top of the Zachman Enterprise Architecture Framework. The first question is the where. Where are we going to put all of our central technology that does stuff? Collects data, stores data, manages data, formats data, analyzes data, presents the results. Where? The cl and classically, go back a few years, there are just two solutions. Off-site, using subcontractors, outsourcing, and so on. Or on our own server environment inside our organization. Today, we still have that. We have software as a service in the cloud. We have cloud providers, whether it's AWS, Amazon Web Services, and all the other ones, or Google, and, 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 and. Or it could just be an ordinary web hosting company. Or we can build the, hard, the server farm on our own environment, on our own server, on our own premises. But there's a third option now becoming available, the hybrid, using the public cloud and our own environment and making them talk together. So these are the fundamentally the two, three places where we can actually build our environment. So, 
what you will need to do is to research how modern services are delivered through the cloud, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, application as a service, and so on. There are so many different ways now of actually delivering the technology that's going to create your service and then provide that service to whoever your end user customers are. Find out what the options are. Find out the strengths and the weaknesses of each option. They all have different strengths and weaknesses and different appropriateness to the type of service that you're trying to deliver. So find out what the options are and then more importantly find out what the relevant questions are so that you can assess your service against the various options and the various criteria that you can then using your sources citing them carefully you can actually justify the way that you want your service to be delivered. What? What sort of software? Are you going to buy it off the shelf and put it onto your own server? Or are you going to buy it off the shelf and put it onto <coughs> an infrastructure <coughs> as a service type of environment on AWS perhaps? So, commercial off the shelf, that's that one. Are you going to design it from scratch? and get someone to build it for you, or going to build it yourself with your programming team? Are you going to provide a uh, specification and outsource the creation of the software? And you might think about off uh, outsourcing to a supplier in-country, within the UK perhaps. Or are you going to off offshore outsource it to a, uh, a coding factory somewhere else in the world? Are you going to buy a cloud service? Salesforce.com is a classic example nowadays. So, again, the question is, which of those are you going to use? So what sort of software are you going to be using? Off the shelf? Custom designed? Specified and outsourced? Or package out there? Software as a service? Find out what the options are for you or that are overall available, lots of sources. And then, what are the questions that you need to ask yourself to be able to make the right decision from all of those? Lots and lots of questions. Then the who question. Essentially the same sort of four, questions, four sources. Again, find out what each of these approaches represents and the questions you need to ask to be able to make a good, justified uh, recommendation. Because they all have different governance effects. They all have different impacts on the way that your service will be developed and delivered and supported. Here, we're looking at what do you do if you're buying the software or how you're going to develop it. So we've got the standard commercial off-the-shelf software, absolutely bog standard, or it could be salesforce.com, exactly as delivered. It could be PeopleSoft, just delivered in its basic configuration. Or you could go a rather expensive route which is a oh, relatively expensive route to tailor it, modify it to what you need, just somewhere towards what you need. Or if it's something like PeopleSoft or SAP, there are lots and lots of switches that you can set how it works and adjust it somewhat to how you need it to be. SAP comes with about 30 to 40,000 different switches that you can set to make it do pretty much what you need to do. Or you can go one step further and start changing the code. You can add little um, 
bits of code in to make it do exactly what your organization or your service requires. Now this one tends to be more complicated and tends to come with a rather adverse consequence that when the supplier upgrades the software to release N plus one, the next release after you've customized, they will not guarantee that your customizations will continue to work. So then you have a problem that you've got to re-customize, and that might be a bad idea. Again, find some sources. We're now on number f item number four. So there's a fourth set of evaluations, questions, or definitions about what these are and how they work, how they affect you, how they affect your services, your systems. And they shall, will also give you another set of questions. Questions, questions, questions. When? Now, when we get to a question like when, we're looking about all sorts of aspects of time. Go back to the Zachman architecture and have a look at that column and find out advice when you look at maybe the, the materials on Zachman or on Togaf. What are all the questions about time? Time, when do I need to have the service operational, for example? What's driving the time scale? Sometimes it's, I want to introduce it in a company, I want to introduce it at year end. Because that's when I need to start collecting and running the business in a new way. But that might have adverse consequences if you are changing some stuff. Because year-end, there's lots and lots of processing in terms of accounts and information that needs to be snapshotted and status at the year-end to go into the final accounts. And that may already take up most of that time window that you've got at the year-end and make it very difficult to do lots of uh, system and software upgrades. So you may be forced into another date. And when I was at Rolls-Royce and we did ERP implementation with <coughs> SAP, Year end was December 31st, <clears throat> and we would shut down the company from 20, uh, just before Christmas to just after New Year. But that was a very bad time to be changing all of the systems. So we chose uh, Easter, because that was, again, we, had a, we could close all the systems down for about a week. So you've got to think about when can we implement but there's also other overriding questions, maybe. For example, when does the sponsor, the project um, sponsor, require this to start? To capture a critical business position, uh, point. How long is it going to take to develop is another of the timing question. So not only when do I want to have it done by, but can I actually achieve that date? And often in the real world, you'll find a real tension between the business drivers that say, must have this service <coughs> now, or at this point, and the project team who say, uh, we can't manage in that time scale. That time that you've, between now and your intended implementation date isn't going to work. We cannot get the job done in that time scale. So there's a lot of negotiation goes into that timing. And so there's lots of questions about when things should be done and how, they can, how we can fit that timing in. We need to think about consequences. If we don't get it for that planned time scale, what happens if we then move it to this point in time? What are the business consequences, the financial consequences, the customer satisfaction consequences even? And then another question about the when in terms of and time scales, is what is the profile of activity? When are the big points going to come when we need to ramp up our infrastructure because there's a big slug of activity is going to happen? I think you all remember last year at Christmas when we had a little bit of an issue with Turnitin and it didn't run terribly effectively when everybody in the country was trying to submit their articles. 
We need to think about when the peak workload times are going to be and plan <coughs> around that to meet the service levels that we want to guarantee. So lots of questions about when with lots of interesting consequences. And then we've got the how much one. The how much, how much will it cost? How many resources? How many people? All those sorts of things. How many devices? How much hardware? How much software? How many software licenses are we going to need? So again, research around the various types of opportunities and the consequences and the questions you again need to ask to get sensible recommendations. From all of this work, which <clears throat> you can start doing pretty shortly, and during the workshops this week, you're going to have six major topic areas, and you should be looking for five to ten sources for each of those six questions, plus lots of notes about the questions that go with each of these air topic areas. So build that working bibliography. So out of this week's work, you ought to have something between 30 and 60 sources that will help you to justify your design decisions using the Zapman Enterprise Architecture. Because this is what you are required to use in terms of designing or defining various important aspects of that service you're going to create. And you'll be able to use many of those working bibliography sources as citations in your assignment to justify that section of your article. And ideally, you should have short notes about each of the sources that you've got. So that you don't have to keep going back and reading the whole of each of your sources. So in terms of both the work now and then this afternoon and on Friday afternoon, what are you going to be doing in the workshop? <clears throat> As always, what we're looking for is a strong critical evaluation of what you are doing. Not a lot of description, AWS is this, outsourcing is this, etc, etc. No. In the context of the service that you are considering, critically evaluating in your article, you need to be thinking about a strong critical evaluation of the most important questions that you can fit into your article on the service delivery side within a Zapman Enterprise Architecture framework. You might want to go to ITIL, <coughs> for example, to find out about service delivery. Because there are two sections to ITIL. One is service de <coughs> development, and one is service delivery and maintenance. So have a look for ITIL as well. And then using just the top two levels of the Zapman Enterprise architecture, do a critical evaluation. from which you will have developed pretty much the structure and the framework for the, chap the section of your article that uses the Zachman Enterprise Architecture. And we can have a think, look at that next week. We can talk about it as you develop it into your article. Because by now, your article should be at least halfway developed. In fact, a bit more than that, because the Ed Enterprise Architecture section is, I think, section three of the article. You only got one section left after that, which is how do you measure the success of your service? I see a few interesting uh, smiles. So that's an introduction to service de design and delivery and support. A, a large set of questions that will help guide you 
through developing that part of your article, that part of your assignment. And it will also help you to understand how services are delivered and managed in general. But you're going to reflect it into your article in the specific context of that service you're going to write about. Okay.